Good day, my peeps. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Um, ah, this is a 6950 XT uh, by XFX. Very beautiful card. Um, you know, when the uh, PCI slot is not cracked. Um, this is actually a simple fix. I've had a not this is the first time actually that I have an AMD card with a cracked PCI slot with this type of um, damage like the problem that I have with this card the problem with this one is that is of course it's cracked but the the lines the lanes the data lanes are so tiny so close together that when I try to tin them you know when I put, try to do uh, do any tinning to the lanes they, they clump together the tin clumps together it just this is what we have to deal with in the, in, the, in the techie world like in the in the repair shops and whatnot um this kind of repairs they suck at times like uh, this may not seem like much at the moment but believe me um when it comes to we're talking about th these let me get this, see if hopefully I can get, I'm tinning basically the lines that I'm, um, these, th this crack, you may not see it here, but it goes through these lanes here. Okay. Um, and it sucks to have to, um, tin th such small little lanes here. Let me just pause it real quick. Let me go back. Uh, see if I can get a good shot here. Uh, right there. Okay. Um, it may not look like it, but th these lines right here, they're thinner than your hair, than one of your hairs, like you from, you know. Um, so uh, when, when it comes to, and th this is actually my first time that I encounter these such small little lanes. Typically, they're, you know, more apart, like, you know, you have one here, another one here, and another one here. Easy fix. These are tiny they're very tiny and it's a pain in the butt um i i have to, I had to put this project here um and and pause because i need a better microscope my microscope that you're seeing me uh doing this right now it's just not doesn't have enough magnification for this so i am waiting for something better more adequate for this type of work uh, I've gotten away with this little microscope for doing, you know, crack repairs and just mundane things, you know, mundane repairs on graphics cards. But this, um, these, when it comes to this tiny, tiny, tiny lanes like this, I need better, better magnifications. This is why I tell you guys to have your cards like this on the riser, like, and yeah, I get it, like. You know, this stuff is not cheap, even in my tester system, like, you know, I have a riser there. I have a riser here on my main rig uh, because I want to protect my purchase, especially this huge freaking card. There's no way I'm going to have it in a horizontal position, even with the support. Um, but I know it's 50 bucks for one of these things. This, this one here, actually, let me show you what which riser I'm using because I've never actually made a video about this. Oh man, this is turning into <laughs> not what I was planning to make a video of, but I think this is important. So I'll show you guys. Okay, this is the riser that I use. It's made by Fantex. Um, and it is very, very compatible very universal like you see here obviously this is a fantex case so it's gonna fit like a you know hand in a glove however this one here is a corsair 7000 a 7000 d or something like that but again it it works it just fits really nicely in there um very compatible so if you're gonna go for a riser, there's a lot of them out there that are very, very nice, but also very expensive. I would stick to this one here. This is the one that I use, that I've always used, um, that I've always used, and I would highly recommend that you guys get. Um, it comes with the metal, this one here is white. I painted it white, so don't be fooled. <laughs> um, they do sell them in white, but 
Uh, they're hard to come by. I don't know why. When you do get the uh, the box, when you do order it, it comes with the riser like this. You know, with the the actual cable um, and some padding and like this, so you can put underneath and you know whatnot. I just throw everything. I've thrown like three three riser items all into one box. I don't want to have three different boxes. So. Um, but yeah, and it also comes with a uh, like a support, like you see there. If you want to add that for during transport, so this would be the the riser that I would strongly recommend. Uh, it is steel. It is very solid. It is not going to bend <laughs> that easy unless you're like forcibly trying to bend the thing. Um, so it works. It works really nice. Um, I would highly recommend it. So yeah. Um, Put your graphics cards on the riser if you can afford it. If not, use a support for those heavy things because um, we all love computers, right? But if we're not doing things right, uh, it will just end up on some technician's bench for repair and your warranty may not cover that type of damage, you know, cracked PCB or cracked joints under memory, you know, that sort of thing. All right, fellas. So this is actually a 2060 that that had the uh, the mod or the shunt mod done on it. Um, whoever had this card before, uh, that's my suspicion at least, um, had done so, and this is what happened. Uh, basically, the solder here melted because of the heat, and it also caused these two. Uh, resistors here 12 volt resistors here uh, to also melt because of the the heat um, I repaired every you know I even installed a new shunt and um, you know undid the damage there but when I looked under the microscope I noticed that there was a uh, solder oozing out of the um, out of the out of these two drivers here these are MOSFETs you know power drivers um, and when I lifted this, when I tried to lift this one up, it would not come off. It was just refused, and the reason is because it was welded to the PCB. Um, and the only way to get this to the proper way would be to um, instead of trying to pull it up the way I did, uh, would be to grind down through it so that um, the pad would not be, uh, you know, you wouldn't have this type of destruction. But in this case, there was already a hole uh, through this pad, and it also took some of the fingers down with it, uh, as you can see here. Now, typically, this is not so bad that like I encounter uh, situations like this where you just add a little piece of copper here uh, because they they will they, they work in parallel, so you know this 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 is not a problem. But when you have something like this here happen, um, you know, or something like this, it's for me, it's a it's a it's a big no no. I mean, there's no way to for me to restore this here. This is already ripped from the um, from the PCB. Now, um, I'm not sure if this one here is redundant. Like, if it's um, um, you know, this is this is alpha and omega drivers, uh, and to me, like alpha and omega. Uh, I can't say they're the best. Uh, I like Infineon or uh, MPS, uh, but uh, I, I typically encounter this a lot with Alpha and Omega uh, drivers. They're they're very common to just pop um, and make a crater like this. So the moral of the story, I don't want to drag this, you know, for for too long. Um, when you overclock your graphics cards, like you're 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 doing shot mods and things like that, things that you shouldn't be doing, um, just remember that all that power has to go has to come out of somewhere it has to go somewhere as well um, and it will typically cause this type of damage here so this is the pad here ripped from the the PCB and the hole there um, and uh, you know with this type of damage here this wouldn't be so bad right like if, if I had the fingers here intact but this is all gone so um, and by the looks of it let me see here and by the looks of it, this this one also looked the same exact way down here. Uh, I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit there. 
So this tells me this this is going to be the same case with this one here. Um, this is just two drivers gone. Uh, this this graphics card to me is a it's just a brick now um, because of how badly this that this type of damage is. So shunt mods and you know overclocking your cards like um, you know out of spec like extreme overclocking um, on cards that are not they're not um how do i say uh, they're not that great of quality you know uh the, the 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 power system that they're using like power drivers what are they using are they using mps infineon you know something quality um if they're not like alpha and omega viche uh, rich tech those are mediocre to me my personal opinion they're mediocre they're they're okay they you know they will last you um, as long as you're running your card normally but Oh man, and uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the situation there. So enough of this mumbling around. I know you, I know I didn't mean for this video to be this, but um, this is I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. You know, shot mods they do you will destroy. You can potentially destroy your graphics card um, by doing something what I think is stupid. So, but hey, to each their own. If you don't mind paying the technician to fix something like this for you, sure. Go ahead.